Just look at how rich and beautiful that curry is. Whoa. This is like richness on top of richness. Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Mumbai, India. Ying and I had a quick breakfast at the hotel this morning and today we're going to be hanging out with Myron who has been watching our videos for many years and he invited us to hang out and to go around Mumbai so he should be here soon and I think we're going to eat a lot of food today. We met up with Myron and we just jumped into a taxi. <laughs> you want to say what's up Myron? Okay, hi guys, uh, Myron here. I'm so happy Mark has made it all the way to Mumbai, finally, finally, you know, and uh, yes, uh, it's really great, it's really awesome, and I'm so lucky that I'm in his video, uh, never dreamt, I mean, just like you guys sitting out there, I used to be at my home watching his videos, and now here I am in his video, <laughs> so yes. anyways, thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, Myron, for the kind words, and we are on our way over to Crawford Market. We arrived to Crawford Market. This is a huge market area in Mumbai and this is the indoor section which is housed in this old colonial building. You can find just about everything here from candies and snacks and sweets to nuts and shampoos and just about everything you can find, you, you can think of, you can find here at this market. And this is the indoor section, but then if you go outside, there are many streets um, with just, just a huge bazaar full of everything you can imagine to buy as well. Along with all of the dried products and the household items, there's also some really good looking fruit at this market and some vegetable vendors as well. And you can just smell the ripeness of those mangoes. Mango. Thank you. You've really got to be careful of the traffic and the action that is happening on this road. But we are walking down the road from Crawford Market. This is definitely one of the market streets where you have to kind of duck so you don't get hit sometimes by boxes or transport or vehicles. Uh, but it's an amazing place just full of action. is just fascinating. There's so much going on. There are businesses and restaurants and stalls and just lots and lots of people, lots of action. This is an amazing, just action-filled place. And this area is actually the Muhammad Ali Road, which is a very, very famous food street in Mumbai. But it's especially famous in the Ramadan period, as well as at night. Oh, Bone marrow. And we have stopped to eat a, a little quick lunch at a restaurant called Nur Mohammed. This restaurant is especially famous for serving Nali Nahari. And this is beef. There are some chunks of beef and then these little white pieces are bone marrow which has been extracted from the bone and into the, the gravy and this is this is definitely an orange oily gravy and it smells and looks incredible. Oh, this is very fluffy actually. This is a, I think this is a tandoori roti. Is it a tandoori roti? And it's, it's actually extremely fluffy. And break off a piece and I'm gonna make a little cone shape so I can grab some of the, the curry. 
and I especially want to get some of that bone marrow in this first bite. Oh wow, just look at how rich and beautiful that curry is. That is amazing. Oh wow. Okay. It's so rich and so like oily but amazing. It has a just kind of a light spice blend. And then that marrow, it literally just melts in your mouth along with that oil and those spices. What I'm gonna do next is grab a little wedge of lime and squeeze in a little bit of lime juice. It's so ridiculously rich. <laughs> it's so rich. Especially, not only, not only is there a lot of oil, but bone marrow on top of that. This is like richness on top of richness. Yeah, this is just one of the more rich dishes I think I've ever had. So tender and it literally just melts into that bone marrow and oil and sauce. Wow, that is insane. This dish, this Nalina Hari that I'm having, it's amazing. It's, it's super rich, yeah. uh, very buttery, not too spicy, but yes, I love it. Maybe it's one of the richest dishes I've had in a very long time. There's this little dish of salad, and I think it's chopped up chilies, and I'm not sure what that little one is. It looks almost like ginger. I'm gonna pinch a little bit to taste. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that, that's sliced up chilies, a little bit spicy, and I think that is ginger, but it's, I think it's baby ginger because the ginger is very mild and just has a juicy ginger taste to it. Mm. And a nice like lime sour flavor to it as well. One thing you can do, which Myron has explained to me, is that you can take your the piece of meat and just set it into the middle of the, the roti and just kind of break it. And then you can, then that way it's easy to grab pieces of the, the roti. And take little bits of meat. Oh, and I think I could add some marrow to this bite. Dip it into that beautiful sauce. And some white jiggly bits of marrow. Wow. That marrow is unbelievable. I have finished my roti, but I still have some of the curry left. So you can kind of eat it like a like a soup at the bottom of all that all that gravy. Wow. It's so buttery and so rich and so smooth and so so like so meaty. Oh, one thing I was going to tell you is that in, in India, because there are so many vegetarians, you either eat veg or non-veg. And veg means pure vegetarian, whereas non-veg usually means like extreme meat. And in India, it would be common to call a dish like this hardcore non-veg because this is about as opposite as vegetarian as you can possibly get. Also, it's worth mentioning that this is a pretty cool restaurant. It's on the side of the road and there's a highway which is above ground. So it kind of has a dark feel to it. But then you come back into this restaurant, it's a real classic restaurant. There's like bucket seat couches that we are sitting on, which it's, it's the perfect environment for eating bone marrow stew. We are now walking around down the street in an area what is called the Bendi Bazaar, which is another huge bazaar area in Mumbai. I'm seeing just about everything you can imagine once again, including oh, a whole shop full of different knives. And then there are a lot of like household supplies, plastics. Down there are a bunch of cats oh, eating meat. <laughs> and then I'm seeing like a lot of kitchen supplies as well. Pot stores, toys. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this market. And 
just has an amazing feel to it. The stalls are on both sides of the lane. There are bicycles and motorcycles. There are buildings surrounding us and there are, I think they are crows which are just flying all overhead. This is a, a very interesting place to just walk around and explore and just to people watch and to shop watch. Yeah, sure, sure. I don't think of sandwiches when I think about Indian food, but in Mumbai, sandwiches with masalas and different uh, spices and potatoes and vegetables are an extremely popular street food snack. This has to be one of the most fascinating street sandwiches I've ever seen made. He took two pieces of bread and he put butter all over them and then he added in what did, did he all cut in there? Using a hacksaw blade, he like sliced in some tomatoes, some onions, some, there's definitely some um, uh, cucumber, then a masala potato mixture he spread into it, and then he shredded on some cheese, and then he added some chutneys, and the, the best part about him making the sandwich is, is that he had this like iron, this iron device sandwich maker, which you put the sandwich into, and then he stuck it over a camp like a propane fire, and it just grilled within that so it's hot and fresh. So this is a classic Indian Mumbai street sandwich. So we can see that cross section. Oh, that is beautiful. Look at all those layers of vegetables. And this is a vegetarian sandwich as well. But there is some cheese. I'm gonna take this first wedge of sandwich and I think I'll go in for some of that chutney. Oh, and I'm losing some ingredients though. Oh well. Mmm. Oh, that's awesome. I can taste a little bit of cumin in there. And what I really like is that beetroot. That's really good. The beetroot is just soft and just sort of dissolves. And then you have the crunchy cucumber, the crisp onion, and then the cheese just is melted and just wraps it all together. And then that like minty kind of chutney in there as well. That is, that is pretty awesome. Mm, so many different vegetables. Mm, and even the potato is really good in there. That was a surprisingly, extremely tasty sandwich. It was really colorful with all those different ingredients and all those layers. And yeah, that was really good. Just a, a very typical sandwich that you'll find all over the streets of Mumbai. We just took a taxi over to Haji Ali Mosque area 
and it is insanely packed today. Just so many people. So we have decided to stop at Haji Ali Juice Center. Okay, I ordered a lemon water and I got the salted version as opposed to the sweet version. Like extremely salty limeade. Mm. This is a beverage that you need when you're sweating outside because it has all that salt in it so you can retain all of your, your vitamins and then that lime juice. Oh yeah, it's pretty rough. Right now it is high tide so you cannot walk to the mosque but when it's low tide there is a, a pathway that uncovers from the water and you can walk to the mosque. The police have mentioned that at 6 p.m. it will be low tide so they will allow people to walk to the mosque and so that's why it's so busy around here right now is that everybody's just waiting around until 6 p.m. But I think that's in about four hours so I don't think we're gonna stick around. But it was really nice to get a view of the mosque just from the coast here. Hello. We jumped back in a taxi and it looks like it's gonna rain pretty soon. Or I think it's starting to rain right now as I said that. And we're gonna take the sea link to Bandra, an area of Mumbai called Bandra. <laughs> it to Mount Mary and there's a main cathedral and then across the street there is a shrine but you walk inside to the cathedral and it's just an amazing place of peace and complete calm and silence the complete opposite of being in the center of the bustle and chaos of Mumbai And one of the reasons we haven't taken, or even in the videos, you haven't even seen auto rickshaws is because auto rickshaws are not allowed in South Mumbai, which is where we've been uh, so far since being on this trip. So, but this North Mumbai and in Bandra onwards, there are lots and lots of auto rickshaws. Yeah. So this, is, this is another beach, yes. Bandra beach. It's really windy and raining off and on. We are walking up the promenade to the Bandra Fort. And this is their remains of an old Portuguese fort, but now it's sort of been made into a public park where people come just to sit next to the ocean. The waves are crashing and you from here you can also get a really good view of the Sea Link Bridge. this time pretty hard so we jumped into an auto rickshaw and we are on our way to a place to have some chat. Okay. We just took a pretty intense auto rickshaw ride from the Bandra area to a place called Elko for some different snacks. Right along the street, they have an outdoor section where you can just stand and order and eat standing, but they also have a couple floors of indoor sections, and we have just ordered a couple of different chats. This one is called Chev Puri, and they are little, little discs, crispy discs on the bottom, topped with a bunch of different things and a lot of crispies. There are some peanuts in here, there are I think that's cilantro, there's some onions and potatoes, just like a splatter of crunchiness. And what you do is you can just grab one with your fingers. It includes so many, oh yeah, on the bottom there you can see all of the different chutneys and sauces mixed in and then all of those crunchy goodies. I think I'll, I'll eat the whole disc in one bite. 
That's like an amazing nacho. For a moment there, I thought it was actually guacamole because the potatoes in there are so creamy, almost like avocado. You got a little bit of spiciness going on. You've got a little bit of sweetness from the tamarind. You've got just crunchy things all over the place. And then you have the, the onion flavor as well. We also got dahi puri. And dahi is the yogurt. And then the puris are those little hollow, sh crispy shells. It's kind of sweet and salty and crunchy. And then you have a little bit of sourness from the yogurt. But then you can also taste the, the sprinkle of spices. The chef puri in particular was absolutely delicious. That was the best thing that I tried here. We were just walking along the road and we have found a man selling desserts and this is a type of malai, which is a cream dessert. And actually this one is a very special one because it is made with the very first milk of the cow. And I believe in, in English that's called colostrum. So it's like the creamiest, richest milk with all the all the, uh, the nutrients and all the richness. It looks a little bit like jelly textured, but at the same time it looks kind of like cheese as well. Wow. It kind of has the flavor of cheese, except it's very sweet. And then the texture is like a combination of tofu and jelly or jello. And then at the same time you can taste like a really strong milk flavor. <laughs> We have made it to an area which is called Linking Road, which is another shopping market, especially for clothes. And again, it is just a packed market. We've been, especially with ladies, because there are a lot of uh, women's clothing here. From the market, we walked over to a restaurant that's called Jai Jawan, which serves Punjabi food. And they're especially known for their prawns fry which we ordered, and actually at that market, Linkway Market, they have a stall of this same restaurant, which is just standing, but then you walk kind of about five minutes away from there, and there's more of a sit-down restaurant, so we came to the sit-down restaurant to get a little bit of peace. The prawns fry have just arrived. They are hot and fresh, deep fried, coated in a little bit of a batter, and then you can see a little bit of salt or some kind of seasoning sprinkled on top, and you can smell the aroma. I think it'll be fun. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wow, the prawns are like bouncy in texture. Mm -hmm. Kind of a light but very crispy batter, very crunchy, yeah. salty. That is as good as it looks. Definitely a squeeze of lime would be wonderful. Maybe a little bit of this chutney as well. I'll put a little bit of this down on my plate. Wow, those are good. Those are like those are like shrimp onion rings and just like plump and like bouncy shrimp. A little bit of that chutney. Wow. Mm. And with that extra lime, that that gives it the the refreshing sour touch. Especially I like it because it contrasts the, the saltiness. The chutney is also extremely good. You can taste a lot of garlic in there, and I think um, a lot of cilantro, and maybe maybe some lime juice, as well as maybe some ginger in there as well. We also had to order some tandoori chicken, which is also a Punjabi specialty, and yeah, tandoori chicken is just one of the great styles of chicken in the world. And we got the whole chicken cut into pieces, and I love those little rivets within the chicken to make sure all the flavor seeps inside and to cook it evenly. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> oh yeah, that's hot. Oh. Oh, wow. Sometimes when you have tandoori chicken, it's kind of dry. 
but this tandoori chicken, it's extremely juicy. It is just caked in flavor from that outside and you can taste like the, the really fast way that it's been cooked in the, in the clay oven so that it, you can taste like the roasted flavor throughout the whole piece of chicken. It's so good on its own, but I am kind of a, an addict of sauces and chutneys. So, oh, that's hot. Oh, ho, ho. I have to go in for some of that chutney. Maybe. I gotta have some of that chutney. That chutney is just ridiculously good. That chutney is awesome. That chutney is award-winning. You could, you could just eat that chutney like a soup. It's garlicky and sour and Oh, and herbaceous. We also ordered some dal makani, which is our black lentils, and this is one of the, the world's great bean dishes. Let me grab a tandoori roti. And I cannot wait to try that dal makani. That is just one of the world's great, like, lentil bean dishes. Oh, it's so good. And again, that has a nice garlicky taste, and it's creamy. It's, it's just wonderful. I love dal makani. Another dish we got is called mutton kima, and oftentimes this is served with just white bread, and then you eat it and dip it up, but we just got some tandoori roti, which we're gonna eat with it. Try to scoop a little bit of this in. It kind of looks like, I think it's minced, it's minced mutton with all the spices. Minced mutton. You can taste probably some cumin in there and just a blend of spices and then it's like in a rich kind of buttery gravy. Oh wow. That is, that is marvelous. Have a safe trip. Thank Enjoy you. your world tour. Thank you very much, man. Okay. It's fun to hang out. Enjoy, man, and never stop making videos. Okay. <laughs> never stop traveling, never stop eating. That's Definitely. All, that's all I want to say. All yeah. right, man. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We finished with dinner at Jai Jawan. That was some amazing food. And we took a taxi all the way back to South Mumbai where we're staying in Kulaba. It was a day, we seemed to go to a lot of busy, packed, just kind of chaotic markets today, which was very interesting, awesome to walk through and also had some delicious food and it was great to hang out and meet Myron. Thank you all very much for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave a comment below. And also make sure you subscribe for more food videos. And also I wanted to mention that I'll leave this video in a playlist for this entire round the world trip for food series. So you can check out the full list if you haven't seen all the videos. And thank you again for watching. See you on the next video. Check out this goat standing on top of the motorbikes. Hello. And then right down from the goat, there's a chicken standing on the motorbike too. <laughs>